Hello and welcome to Tech 24, your weekly dose of digital news. I'm Rebecca Bowring. Coming up in the programme, doing technology the eco-friendly way. We'll talk big emitters and small solutions that can help cut down on energy use. Plus, we'll tackle the mounting problem of electronic waste. Are you in? U.S. President Barack Obama launches his 2012 re-election bid with a web video. We've got a sneak peek coming up in our news wrap. And France 24's internet editor Eric Olander will be putting the Nokia E7 through its paces. Business or pleasure? And is it enough to tempt users away from the iPhone? We'll give you the answers later on in the programme. But first, it's Sustainable Development Week here in France, and we thought that gave us a good excuse to talk to you about green technology, carbon footprints, and what happens to your old laptop once you've thrown it away. But first, unfriend coal. That is the message of a Greenpeace campaign calling on Facebook to turn to renewable energy. The organisation has given the social network until April the 22nd, or Earth Day, to make that switch. As I said, Eric Orlando from France24.com is here with me in the studio. Thanks for being with us, Eric. Let's talk, first of all, about the link between updating your Facebook status, for instance, surfing online, and what that does to consume energy. Yeah, a lot of people, when they go online, don't understand that there's a huge energy process that's also being consumed every time you log on on the phone or on your computer or on any other device. So when you access a site like Facebook, and this is what Greenpeace is bringing attention to, you're actually going through hundreds, sometimes thousands of different servers. Each of these servers runs very, very hot. You know when your computer has that fan that kicks in? Well, imagine this fan running 24 hours a day. Now, in the case of huge sites like Google or Facebook or some of the Intel properties, there are hundreds, sometimes thousands of servers running at the same time, and they all have to be cooled. That's the key issue for how much energy consumption these Internet sites take. You mentioned Google. It's been estimated the company has a million servers, though apparently it's a trade secret. Nobody knows for sure. The company actually has quite good green credentials. For instance, it uses... Uh, energy from wind farms. It also uses goats to graze outside its headquarters to, to mow the lawn. But it's been criticised for ravenous energy consumption. Uh, there's a calculation that we've done here. Google says each search produces 0.2 grams of CO2. There are 2 million searches every single minute. So that's 400 kilograms of CO2 per minute. An enormous figure. How does a huge corporation like Google shrink its, its carbon footprint? Well, the first thing to do is to separate the fact from the fiction. So when these goat stories come up and see what Google's trying to do to reduce its energy footprint, that's a very, very small amount of energy that's going on. Really what happens with Google is they've got, you know, servers, thousands, millions maybe around the world in these server farms that all consume vast, vast amounts of energy. So it has to bring down its carbon footprint, not only for the public relations benefit, but also it's a cost. It's a very, very high cost. Remember, energy costs are not the same all over the world. With a company like Google, they're operating in some very, very high cost markets. So it's good business as well as good for the environment. And some say it should change the colour of its homepage, because white is very energy consuming. Well, white is very energy consuming because it takes more power to, to fuel those parts of the electrons that are actually you know, powering up. So a black, a dark screen is more energy efficient, but Google for design purposes and its aesthetic decided wants to keep with white. Let's talk about e-waste now. That's the result when we throw away our electronic devices, like mobile phones or laptops. 50 million tonnes are produced every year worldwide. This clip from Good, which is a media platform dedicated to social causes, explains a bit more. Look at those computers. This clip goes on to tell us that, in fact, a lot of e-waste from the West is sent to developing countries. Well, this is a big problem. Shows like Tech 24 and all the other shows out there, which are pressuring people to buy new technology, and it creates a very disposable society, so leading to tens of millions of computers and phones and fax machines and all these different pieces of technology that are just thrown away. And sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind. Well, it does end up somewhere, and too often it ends up in the developing world, and that is in places like China and India. And they don't always do the best to take 
take care of that, uh, of, of separating the different pieces of the technology, which can lead to terrible environmental degradation. A lot of these products do also have uh, very poisonous chemicals inside them. But we can talk now a little bit about solar energy, which is one way to try and cut down on our carbon footprints. Um, lots of devices coming out on the market, and it seems that solar panels are getting smaller and thinner by the month. Well, this is one of this is a device that comes out of a company here in Exxon in France, in Exxon Provence, and it's from a company named Wizips. And what this is, as you see on the top here, it's a photovoltaic skin that's here that basically recharges the battery. Now, this is good for both reducing power consumption, but also in parts of the developing world where you have irregular power supplies, you can have a phone that's charged, well, by the sun. And so this is the type of innovations that we're starting to see in the marketplace that will both, again, help the environment and help the consumer. So one day the charges that we plug in may in fact be obsolete. Exactly. Eric has some more gadgets coming up for us later, but first let's go to our tech news roundup. We start with Obama's 2012 re-election bid launched this week on Cyberspace. Barack Obama is ready to fight for a second term in office. The American president's launched what's set to be history's most expensive election on the web. Supporters received an email linking to a two-minute web video called It Begins With Us. There's little of Obama himself in the film, which points viewers to his slick campaign website, BarackObama.com. Let the fundraising begin. If you're a pro-democracy campaigner who's been arrested during a protest, the U.S. State Department's developed an app just for you. It's a panic button that the activist can press, wiping the phone's address book and sending a warning to others. Hillary Clinton's team is working on a version of the software for Android. From panic button to plus one button, Google's answering Facebook's like with its own social networking feature. With plus one, users can mark search results as worth checking out and make recommendations to their friends. Microsoft's filed an antitrust complaint against Google. The software giant alleges its arch rival deliberately squeezes competition out of the search market. The European Commission began investigating Google's business practices last year. It's an ironic twist after Microsoft's numerous legal battles over its system's failures to work with competitors' products. Facebook is being sued in a billion-dollar lawsuit. Its offence? Failing to act quickly enough to block a page calling for a third intifada. Pro-Israeli lawyer Larry Clayman says he himself felt a target of this call to kill Jews. With over 500,000 fans, the site promoted violent uprisings to free Palestine. Now, it's been touted as one of the best smartphones out there for professionals. Is that the case, Eric? Well, this is the Nokia E7. It's launching in Europe today, this week, actually. You know, on, the, on the good part of it, it's a great hardware design. Love this keyboard right here. The bad part about the Nokia E7 is the fact that it's got the Symbian 3 operating system, which we don't know if is going to be around because Nokia, as you may have heard, is transferring to the Windows Phone 7 operating system. So it's one of those in-between phones. Bottom line, people who like Nokia will love this phone probably not going to attract too many iPhone users. It's not enough to get you to recycle your iPhone then. Many thanks for all your expertise, Eric Orlando. That brings us just about to the end of this edition of Tech24. Thanks for being with us. Do check out our website for this show and many others. You can also follow us on Twitter, TechF24, and don't forget to become a fan of the programme on Facebook. We've just time now to bring you our clip of the week and the world's dictators are getting the angry birds treatment in this video. Remember, remember that it's a video game that's been downloaded over a hundred million times, really popular. Well, this tells the story of the three big pigs. It's a play on the children's story and tells us all about the Arab uprisings starring Tunisia's Ben Ali, Egypt's Mubarak and, of course, Libya's Colonel Gaddafi. They huff and they puff and their houses do blow down. We'll see you again next week here on Tech24. I built my house of bricks. I have no chance to sing and dance, cause work and play don't mix.